this is my latest model and as you can see it's a tank and unlike the last tank I tried building this one actually works so the tank this is based off as you probably if you know anything about tanks would guess it's the M22 Locust um, so it's a World of American tank designed to be airdrop and for that reason it's quite small which is obviously a benefit because tanks are quite big even in scale terms so initially this project was using rubber tracks like my ketting pad does unfortunately they don't work uh, because they're too soft they twist and would come off the drive sprocket and come off before you even got to the first drive wheel so I had to dot them and then do all these plastic tracks which are great except for the fact to manufacture them you have to tear your hands to pieces because each one requires cleaning with a knife, putting the pins in, which takes forever. So the suspension on this is, I think you'd call it dual action suspension, because it has one spring between each of these rollers. So as this one goes up, it gets forced up on the other one, which is, I don't know if that's a really good or bad thing. Um, it's printed in one, two, three, four, five sections. It can be printed in two on a printer like an and a T8 like I have, but it will just take forever, and now that's actually quite hot. Um, and um, it'll take forever and uses tons of support filament. So I decided to do it in multiple sections, which isn't as good for the structural strengths probably, but saves a lot of money. Um, it has return rollers at the top here and here, which means you can short track it on the front drive sprocket by running the track link around there. So let's say that rear wheel falls off, as it does quite often, you could technically short track it. So, the tracks are small length, um, and they have, it has twin side pegs. Um, so the wheel runs in between the two, and it doesn't have like a central, central pin like my cutting card does. But they go inside the drive sprocket, which is a bit better. So the tracks work quite well, they also have a high, they have a hole in them for... Um, Around sand or something to escape so it doesn't get caught in the wheels and knock the track off. And you also have two holes which allow you to put like a bolt shush to have put a bolt through them which would allow more traction. So the turret, um, as you can see, actually looks quite cool. And inside the turret, there's a gear which is where the turret drive will be. So this will have full traverse and the gun will obviously elevate and depress. So it has. Is my last tank I decided to try and build it with a triple differential transmission like you'd see on a Tiger one or a Churchill or a modern tank which would allow you to have forward, backward, left, right and neutral turn where track on the right would go different from the track on the left but the other way around because that was left and right um, but that never worked because you can't really print it small enough and uh, it wasn't strong enough so this one has two transmissions so there's two 920 kV motors running through two gearboxes which each have three different speeds. You can either have half speed, normal speed and two times speed uh, by changing the gears around. And this transmission works quite well, they're very reliable. Um, yeah, so, but, and it, yeah, so that's basically it. The transmission is also quite easy to remove, which is nice. So we obviously have, uh, which one's track, which this track, if I can get it into reverse, like that. So you can see it does work quite well, the, the, the turret's not actually on yet, uh, which is a shame, but I don't have time for that. It is quite noisy, it has got some foam in it to try and absorb the noise, but yeah, it doesn't really work. So anyway, let's show it driving around. Ow, I should be wearing shoes. Until that happens. Oh. 
You're also quite fast. If you go in the right direction. Brakes work well. Also can roll because it's not too jammy on the transmission. Getting one motor in traverse is hard enough. Getting two in is a nightmare. The main problem with this model now, with the rubber tracks, it obviously had a tremendous amount of grip on surfaces like this very slippy wood. The problem is now is the tracks don't have any grip, which is good and bad at the same time. The tr rubber tracks were too flexible sideways, but the main issue was that when you tried to turn, the tracks would bend outwards and then simply run themselves off the rollers. By having slippy tracks, they obviously slip easier over the wooden floor. Like this, uh, you would have tracks would have come straight off. But the problem is then when you try and go off roading, is because these tracks don't have any tread on them, because it would have raised print time a lot. There is an issue where it doesn't actually have that much grip. But it does mean you can do cool things like neutral turns at top speed. Until the track pin comes out. Oh, track pins coming. <laughs> I bet that's the same pin that came out before. <laughs> 